Live from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam on 2019. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to Miami, everybody. I think I just saw Don Johnson running by. This is Dave Vellante <laughs> with, with Peter Burris. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We're here at Veeam on 2019. This is day one of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Ian McClarty is here. He's the president of Phoenix NAP. Ian, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. So, Phoenix NAP, service provider based in the Southwest. Tell us more about uh, the company. Yeah, so uh, we started on the Southwest, at, at, hence the name Phoenix, and NAP stands for Network Access Point. So we focus with, uh, on the connectivity side, on the telecom, but we really have uh, moved more to infrastructure services, and that's been more of a worldwide deployment. Last year we did about six global uh, lo locations that were net new to us, so today we're about, about 15 locations. So I always ask guys like you, it's a, you know, the cloud was supposed to put you out of business, and then uh, the cloud has just been <laughs> this huge tailwind. Yeah. Why, what, what was it that everybody missed about the cloud, and how have you been able to exploit it? Yeah, so um, we come from the hosting background. So the cloud has been around for us forever, right? Before it was the term cloud, we, we believed in an OPEX model for infrastructure services. That's what the cloud is. Scalable, easy to, easy to absorb. Uh, so for us, it was, it, it, what, what the cloud did was made us mainstream because hosting was very, was very boutique back in the day, back in the 90s. Now today we're very, a main, very mainstream brand, very mainstream product. Uh, so cloud has really made, made our, our, our lives easier actually. So it opened up the, everybody's eyes, and it yeah. the, the sort of, the, the guys like Amazon and Azure did a lot of market development for you. They did, a lot, and a lot of market development that we ourselves cannot do because we're smaller companies. Right, so um, talk a little bit about uh, what your unique value proposition is, how you guys you know, compete in the marketplace. Why Phoenix NAP? Why Phoenix NAP? So it's, it's really about the suite of infrastructure products. So our spectrum really starts with co-location on one end, and it ends to bare metal dedicated cloud systems. And then in between we have all the virtualization cloud platforms, more, more standard VMware deployments. So it's really about a spectrum of services that we cover. Mm -hmm. uh, and we really are really good at, the, at that spectrum of services. So we have, we have developed a lot of depth also around these different offerings. And your facilities, like you say, you started in the Southwest, but yep. where are you guys located? Are you, you know? Yeah, so, we're, we're, so we own and operate out of Phoenix, Arizona, 120,000 square foot facility uh, with, with an IT usable space. Um, and we, uh, we have expanded now to other, with, with other partnerships. Uh, to, with uh, taking large co-location spaces to basically seed our, our different locations, but at some point we were building those locations. Ashburn is one that we're very, getting very close at, with, actually. Uh -huh. So you're data center guys, right? I mean, you know. Well, we're, we're, data, we're, we're hosting guys that went into the data center business uh -huh. and became infrastructure people. Okay, so you've <laughs> sort of evolved. This is Act yes. Three for you. We've been this is Act Three. Act, yeah. Act Two all day. Yes. So how have you evolved your your skill set, your customer base? Well, talk about the evolution of the of the company and where you see it going. Yeah. So I mean, today today we're focusing very much on mid market enterprise. That's what that's that's where our and, and again, how do you define that? We define that by fifty to five hundred million in revenue. That's that's our definition of mid market enterprise. So we're not going after the Fortune 500, and we're not going after SMB. And we have really tapped into the space. And it's a very hard space for, for, the, for the public clouds to, to, uh, to act in today. So, what's different? So obviously, the difference between mid and large enterprises is the mid-sized guys, they're more generalist, they don't have you know, all kinds of specialists, they don't have the resources they that, do the, not. that the large guys do, but they're more advanced than the, than the S. Yes. S and M and, you know, are different than, yes. than large. Yes, they are. So what are the unique attributes of the M that really uh, you, you try to focus on delivering? M, so M, M has budget, but M, M, M just doesn't want to outsource. That's key. They, have, they, they know enough, but they don't, know, they don't have expertise. So what they're looking is, is they're looking for supplemental IT. And that's really what we, what we focus on. So they don't want to outsource their strategic jewel, the family no, jewels. No, but they, but they need but supplemental they need help. help. And, they, and, they, and they don't want to go to consultants either. But M also wants to be L. <laughs> and I think that's a big issue. <laughs> M wants to be L. Typically M wants to be L. So they're looking for, they have budget, they have plans, yeah. they want to scale, but they have to be very careful about how they invest but, to get there. And M likes to server hug still. They like to touch your servers, like to touch your infrastructure. They want to know you, they want to build a relationship. That's what I'm saying, it's very hard for the public clouds to tap into that space because of that. It's, it has a lot of nuances. M wants to, M wants to scale, they want to act like a real business, yes. they want 
They want to know their suppliers because that, they yep. want to know if they're going to be able to go with them. They want to have control over the suppliers as well. Exactly. Yep. So, but come back to that because that becomes that becomes more increasingly a services play. Yes. As M gets more experience, as these medium-sized companies get more experience, they are starting to acknowledge and recognize the new classes of services that they need because yep. they have that sophistication. So how is your business changing and specifically thinking about what Veeam's doing here mm -hmm. to become more of a service provider of at a higher level than just uh, you know, the underlying infrastructure. Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you what, what we're doing right now. We're, on the service side, we're really focused more on managed infrastructure, right? That's the dominant we use. Uh, but the, 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 what infrastructure means is really changing. So today, we're, our conversations internally are about Kubernetes, right? What are we going to do to have a managed Kubernetes stack that is deliverable in an API model? That's our, that's our vision for the company. So, uh, you're a platinum partner of Veeam. Uh, can you talk a little bit about where they fit in your stack, I mean, you've yep. got a whole security layer. Yep. I think you were saying uh, to us earlier that, you know, the 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 data protection piece, the backup, is yep. sort of the last. You it's, know, it's a resort. lifeline. It's a lifeline, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, describe that infrastructure and what you guys have built up. Yeah. So we started at, when we started the company. We started at the edge, right? Let's focus on DDoS mitigation. Let's focus on network protection. Let's start there, and then let's work our way down. And so now, then we we built a VMware stack that that basically is, um, it's third party audited. Uh, it follows compliance rules. When you go to the to the um, uh, to DS, for example, PCI. When you go to the to the DS to PCI website, you can see Phoenix Lab listed as DSS provider there, and it actually actually outlines what we protect on the on the cloud side. So we're very clear and very transparent on that side. Um, so it's been layered for us, a layered approach of protecting the protecting services. But there will always be a breach, and we, you have to count on that. Um, and it's unfortunate, but it's a reality, right? Uh, and and once you embrace that, you can build products around that. And so really, VMware has become a very key part of that equation with both backup and recovery services. And then if there is a breach, then you need to be able to recover those services somewhere. So the disaster recovery services for us is big. Uh, so it really, it really fills, fills, that, fills that missing piece that we had in the equation. Yeah, I mean, you've made that point, Peter, uh, many times, is that the breach is inevitable. It's how you respond to that yeah. breach that's really, really critical. Yes. And, and that's, I mean, not brand new thinking, but it's certainly over the last 10 years has evolved. You, know, you got embrace to embrace it. People used to not talk about breaches. Oh no, yep. you know, don't talk about it. Now it's like, at the board level, yeah, we acknowledge yeah. that it's going to happen and we're putting more and more resources into our response. Is that sort of what you're seeing? Yes, that is exactly what I'm seeing. And I mean, this year alone, 50,000 breaches that were reported, right? And again, who reports those breaches? It's not the S and it's not the M, it's a large enterprise that reports those breaches. So those numbers are even worse in the, in the S and M market, right? Right, right. Yeah. Although the M guys have, are now getting large enough and well, they, have to, they have to report. They have to start have reporting. To. Yeah. Coming back to this notion that, it, and it used to be, it used to be that when there was a breach, it was, always, it was always discussed in terms of hardware, it was discussed in terms of network, yeah. but now it's data. It is. Because that's where the asset is and that's what people are going after. Exactly. So again, coming back to that higher, that notion of higher level services, backup used to be something that you kind of checked off as you yeah. were leaving the customer's location, yep. taking the order. Has it become something that's increasingly one of the reasons why customers are bringing you in? I, I will tell you, the, the, the easiest way for, for us to get, another, another part where Veeam falls into our equation is customer acquisition. Like Veeam to me is not the highest revenue product period, right? But from a customer acquisition perspective, it's the, the best product that we have. It's, it's an easy conversation, because it is. Historically it's been a checkbox. But once the customer figures out, hey, okay, so I got backups, now how do I recover these backups? How do I restore them? Where do I go? That's, that's where we can have a much more, much more uh, complex conversation with them. A lot of these M customers, to become L, are now realizing, I'm not going to get there yep. if I don't use data in ways that the L guys have a hard time using it. So I need to focus on data assets, I need to focus on my digital transformation, which means it's essential that they start thinking about how data protection is going to operate within their business because increasingly they're becoming digital businesses and data protection becomes digital business protection. Correct. Are you having those conversations? All the time, on a day-to-day -day basis. That, those, that, that, that's the bulk of our conversations right now for net new customer acquisition. Why Veeam? Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot yeah. of companies out there, a lot of new startups entering the marketplace. Yep. You got big whales like you know, Dell EMC yeah. and, and some established companies like Veritas, uh, you know, IBM, you got the big blue blanket. Why Veeam? Why Veeam for us? Uh, well, for us, part, part of it is the culture, right? That, that, that was very critical for us. Uh, first, the technology piece, obviously solid, it works, right? The, the, yeah, it, it does work, the marker that, they, that was used, it, it, it's true, right? Um, and the simplicity of it, too. As, as a service provider, I mean, we, we know what to expect with Veeam. So we built a lot, a lot of competency around Veeam as a product line. 
I, I mean, obviously, we, we, we've, we've played and we've, we've used other, other products, but we always go back to Veeam. Uh, it, because, again, it's evolving in a place that we like. Uh, we, see, we see where, where they're going for the recovery piece, right? The restoration piece. We like that as a vision piece also that it's not talked about a lot. It's coming, right? It's the, always the upcoming. But for us, it's going to displace another vendor. The second that comes out, it's, it's a displacement of a vendor for us. Uh, so, it, it, so we like the vision of the company. We like where they're heading. We also like from a corporate culture perspective what they're doing for, for channel-centric. You know, for us, it's, it's helped us mature as an organization tremendously. You know, Ramir hit the nail on the head when he said, you know, you know the, not the best product wins in the market, right? You have to have the, the, company, the company that has the best sales and marketing along with that as well. So for us, you know, we had pretty decent sales. Marketing, we're weaker on, and, we're, and, and Veeam has really coached us along the way to make our marketing efforts even stronger. Yeah, Veeam knows how to market. Yeah, they do. They are <laughs> marketing geniuses, and I love them for that, right? And I have a lot of respect for them for that. So. Yeah, thanks so much for coming Thank you. on theCUBE. It's great to have you. You as well. Thank All you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. It's Peter Burris and Dave Vellante. We're live at Veeam on 2019 from Miami. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back. Thank you.